Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the table widget and I'm going to show you how to configure it and make use of the table widget. My name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without further delay, let's get started. Alright, so to get started, we actually need to bring in a table widget and to do that, I'm just going to bring in a table widget right here into the canvas and here we have a table widget. So let's go into expand this a bit to take up the entire space. Yeah, and this looks nice. And um, as you already noticed, the table has some default data in it. And this is because in the table data property, we have some hard-coded data being passed in, which is displayed in the table widget. But let's go in to actually display some actual data coming from a database query. And this also applies to API calls. So if you want to display data coming from an API call, you have to do this similarly. So I have this get users query, which returns a list of 30 users. And we have the user data coming back. We can actually go in to display this data in the table widget. So in order to do that, what we need to do is to head back and bind that data in a table data property. So to do that, you can bind that using the mustache syntax, which is the double quality brackets right here to open and close it, all right? And then we can go in to type the name of the query and bind the data from that query. So in this case, this is get users.data. And you can see that the users data is being shown on the table. And now we have lots of columns showing up. So you can go in to customize these columns. You can change the order, for example, and you can see that the order has been switched. Or you can go in to edit either of these columns to be exactly the way you want. So we have an image column, for example, which is the column right here. We can go in to set the column type to be of type image. Because we know those are image URLs, um, AppSmith is smart enough or the table widget is smart enough to render those image URLs within the table and you have those images showing up right here. Uh, same also goes for the date of death column. So we have the date of death column, for example. We can go in to configure this to be of type date and then for the display date format we can set this to something that looks really nice and you can see that we have a much better date showing up for these columns so you can go in to customize these columns as you wish you can change the styles make it look or feel exactly the way you want it so you can do that using the table widget heading back to the column section you can also create a new custom column so going back you can see that we have a new custom column created and we can go in to configure this custom column. So for example, I can set this to be of type button and for the label, let's say click me. And when this is clicked on, we can go in to do something like show a message saying hello. And for the message type, we can set this to success. We can go on to click any of these and you can see that we have the hello message showing up. So you, you are really free to configure the table widgets to do exactly what you want it to. You have lots of options for the column type right here. Heading back, you can also set a primary key for the column. And this is going to be a key you are sure is unique across all records. So in my case, I have the ID. You can set the primary key to be the ID. We can also set the default search text. And this will be the text that shows up right here. So let's say, hello. And you can see we have hello being shown up as the default search text. So I'm just going to remove this. And we have all records coming back up. For the default selected row, you can set that using this input. And this will be the row that is selected by default whenever the table widget is rendered. So we can set this to something like four, for example. And you can see that we have four um, default row automatically highlighted. For the row heights, you can make this short, you can make this tall, or you can leave this as default. And then you have the row height. Uh, the other options we have here is the server side pagination. You can actually configure the table widget to paginate based on data coming from server or maybe database. We made a video on how to configure table pagination using server side pagination. So I'm going to link that video right here so that you can go check that out. You can also go in to configure the table's visibility and uh, you can turn this on or off and also the sortability. And for each of these properties, 
you can go into write some JavaScript that will return true or false to turn these properties on or off. You can enable multi-row selection. You can enable client-side search, and this is very useful for client-side searching. For events, you can choose to run an event when any of these um, actions happen. So for the first is whenever a row is selected, whenever a user goes to select a row, you can choose to run an event. You can also run an event whenever the page changes, and this is very useful for server-side pagination. You can also run an event whenever the page size changes or whenever the search text changes. Very useful for configuring um, server-side searching. And you can also run an action whenever the sort changes. Say, for example, when the sort order changes, you can choose to run an action and this will be executed. And for the actions, you can run any of these actions in the list or you can go in to write some JavaScript to perform any custom logic you want performed when that event occurs. All right, so moving on, you can also control the table header options. Right now, we have lots of options displayed on the table header, and you can turn this off to make the table neat to suit your use case. So you can turn off the search, you can also turn off filters, you can turn off downloads, or you can even turn off the pagination, and here you have a really clean looking table widget. For styles, you can go into style the table widget to suit your brand or theme color. So you can go change the cell background, the text color, the size, the font style, the alignment, and the vertical alignment. So you have all of these options for the table styling. So this has been the table widget. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like and get subscribed. And I'm going to catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.